Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. Just a notification here to see when is the ninth of Av and an opportunity to review what we've learned on how to verify this for ourselves. This year, it's off by a couple of days. This is of importance because if you're off for the beginning of the year, you'll be off track for the ninth of Av or anything else. I would not be dogmatic about this if we didn't have biblical proof that tells us when Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, is every year. It also serves as a cross-check to confirm the beginning of the year. Thus, the ninth of Av can be verified with confidence. So let's get into this. Hebcal, the Hebrew calendar site, has this information for the head of the month of Av. Rosh Kadesh, the head of the month, began on Thursday, July 28th of this year and ended on Friday, July 29th of this year. We see the same for the ultra-Orthodox Jewish site at Shavad. Rosh Kadesh, the head of the month, on Friday, July 29th. So now, let's look at our biblical cross-check within Revelation chapter 12 and Leviticus chapter 23 and see if their dates are correct for the Rosh Kadesh of the month of Av and then the ninth. The cross-check is Yom Teruah. This will either confirm that the calendar is on track or their calendar is off this year. The perpetual Hillel 2 calendar that they're using is an autopilot ever since the Sanhedrin was disbanded just before the destruction of the Second Temple and the city of Jerusalem in 70 AD. So this year, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, which is also Rosh Hashanah, is celebrated on September 26th and 27th. Verifying this can confirm whether the ninth of Av is correct. Now, here's when we get to the good part. What's our biblical and visual confirmation of Yom Teruah? Leviticus chapter 23 verse 24 says that the Feast of Trumpets is on the first day of the seventh month. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation. And what does that visual confirmation look like? Read Revelation 12 verse one and look up. This portion of the verse is a reference to the Feast of Trumpets. It describes the location of the sun and the moon relative to the constellation of the woman. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. It's a spot on visual verification every year of Yom Teruah. And yes, it's a big clue to understanding the first few verses of Revelation chapter 12. Specifically, that God would warn the world on a feast of trumpets that Israel will soon head into their 70th week and the rest of the world will see a global collapse and a new world government rise. And we know that the whole warning played out in the heavens, just like the Lord said. We know that this connects us to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, where we've learned that the position of the sun, moon, and stars also confirm the Moed, the appointed times of the Lord, the feast days. The Old Testament foreshadowing the New Testament, and the New Testament confirms the Old Testament. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That word seasons is the Hebrew word moed. 
This is Strong's Concordance H4150. And here's a very important note. In regards to the position of the moon relative to the Moed, the Moed, the appointed times, are not set by the new moon. The new moon identifies the head of the month, the Rosh Kadesh. This is when the new month begins. Then those day counts that we see in Leviticus 23 begin toward the feast day. There is only one feast day that happens on the head of the month, the Rosh Kadesh. There is only one feast day that the new moon sliver plays a role in identifying it. That feast day is none other than Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. So those lights in the firmament are like a big clock above our heads, a big calendar. Their position relays what time of the year it is. The time of year indicates the season. Those seasons correspond to the feasts of the Lord, the appointed times of the Lord. And within those feasts, there are harvests. Now, let's look at astronomy and see where the sun and moon are relative to the constellation of the woman on September 26th and 27th. And then backtrack to the month of Av, all right? We can see that on September 26th and 27th that the sun and moon is indeed in the constellation of the woman. This is a view from the location of Jerusalem in Israel. The moon is not yet in the correct location under her feet. This is a reference to the head of the month for the month of Tishri, which is the seventh month on the Jewish calendar. And on the first day of that month, the new moon is sighted in the constellation of Libra, under the feet of the woman. So here on the 26th and 27th of September, we see that the moon is still in Virgo. It's not until the evening of September 28th into September 29th that the position of the new moon would be correct. Then you would have the woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Thus, Yom Teruah, Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. Remember Leviticus chapter 23 verse 24 on the first day of the seventh month is the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah. On the seventh month and the first day, the sun is always in the constellation of the woman. The new moon is always sighted in Libra, which is under the feet of the constellation of the woman. You seeing this? That's how Leviticus 23 and Revelation 12 helps us to confirm this. In addition, rabbinical writings have also confirmed this as it serves as a historical documentation as to how these months were verified by the sighting of the sliver of the new moon in a specific constellation. It's just like hands on a clock. Let's pause right here for a moment. I need to say this. Can you see now how this has nothing to do with astrology? You see, you see this, right? Nothing to do with astrology. It's just as Genesis 1 and verse 14 points out. Just wanted to make that clear. Not astrology, astronomy. If you can get past that, then you can see how the first few verses of Revelation chapter 12 is describing a celestial event. All right, let's keep going. This is found in Sefer Yetzirah 5 and 2. See, the month of Tishri, 
the new moon is in the constellation of Libra. In the month of Av, the new moon is in the constellation Leo. Is that the case on July 29th of this year? Not exactly. The new moon is crossing over into the constellation Leo, as we can see from RenewedMoon.com, that the new moon was sighted and confirmed in Israel on the evening of July 30th at a 4% waxing crescent and in the U.S. on the evening of July 29th with a 1% waxing crescent. As we can see, the astronomy program was spot on. From the location of Israel on the evening of July 30th, we see at sunset that the moon is in the correct location of Leo and it could be sighted. So, if Rosh Kadesh for the month of Av is the evening of July 30th, then the 9th of Av is not sunset August 6th through August 7th, as we see on their calendars. The evening of August 8th through August 9th would be the 9th of Av. If the moon must be sighted in order to declare the head of the month, then we can see how the Hillel 2 is off by within a couple of days in this instance. If we utilize the sighting in Israel on the evening of July 30th for the head of the month, which also matches what we've learned within scripture and historical Jewish rabbinical records and modern astronomy software programs, we can see the gap difference when compared to the perpetual calendar. Once again, the evening of August 8th through August 9th is the 9th of Av. Please keep in mind these differences and why they occur between these methods. Just saying. I know folks are looking at the 9th of Av for various reasons. Know how to cross check these for yourselves, especially for the beginning of the year when the new moon is sighted in the constellation of Aries. It is the month of the Abib. This year it was April 2nd into April 3rd. That was Nissan 1. In closing, once again, those lights in the firmament are like a big clock above our heads. A big calendar. Their position relays what time of the year it is. The time of year indicates the season. Those seasons correspond to the feasts of the Lord the appointed times of the Lord and within those feasts there are harvests, right? As we know that in regards to feast days, certain events are scheduled to happen where Jesus Christ fulfills each one. Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits represent the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. The first fruits harvest of barley were gathered. The spring feasts are now completed. The summer feast is partially fulfilled with the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. The associated harvest of wheat has not been gathered yet. Post-tribulation, the fall feasts will be fulfilled. Trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. These are fulfilled during the second coming of Christ on the exact day. This sort of explains why there's so much attention in regards to the calendars. I know that the next day folks are looking at is the Feast of Trumpets. Although this is part of the fulfillments that occur post-tribulation during the second coming of Christ, folks still look at Yom Teruah for whatever reason. This year, it's on September 28th. All right. I hope this helps you in some way. I will leave it right here. Till we meet again, live holy before the Lord. Love y'all. Shalom. Shalom.